Okay, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Iori Fulani. Today, let's take a look at um, what? Uh, politics in uh, Anambra. Uh, let's go all the way over to Anambra State, uh, where our guest uh, waiting for us is, uh, uh, well, he's a member of the, former member of the, uh, of the Ninth National Assembly as a House of Representatives member, in fact, representing um, Idemeli North and uh, South Federal Constituency in the person of Dr. Ifeayin Chuku Ibezi. Uh, a fine morning to you, sir. Morning. Morning, Kola. Okay, then. Uh, well, it's close, but uh, it is Yori. Uh, well, we're happy to have you all the same. <laughs> we're happy to have you all the Thank same. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank, um, you. Thank you. Good morning, we, viewers. Indeed. Um, is there something uh, that is worthy of note? Because it would appear as if the, um, um, the vibrancy, let us put it that way, the vibrancy of politics in Anambra seems to have heightened. And uh, this might have been occasioned, I imagine, uh, when the state chairman of APC in the state, Basil uh, AGDK, uh, says that um, come 2025, uh, uh, the ruling APGA in Anambra won't exist anymore. Of course, this wouldn't have been taken lightly by the authorities. Tell me all about it, sir. Uh, well, I wouldn't want to dwell uh, so much on the statement of the, the chairman of our great party in Anambra State, Honorable Chief Basile Jidike. Uh, uh, I may also say that that statement is a statement of fact for now. Uh, as the ruling Without, party, without wanting to dwell on it. Uh, well, yes, I don't want to dwell on it deeply. Uh, but as a ruling party at the National, uh, we are doing everything humanly possible to uh, prepare our great party, the All Progressive Congress, APC, in Anambra State ahead of the 2025 governorship election in Anambra State. There are a lot of things we have put in place, or we are putting in place in Anambra State today uh, to show that uh, APC is ready to take Anambra come uh, November 2025 governorship election. Okay, um, well, um, it's like people will say, um, let, let, the, let the game begin, which indeed it would appear to have, have already. Um, APGA in Anambra, um, it, it's been in power for what? It's 17 years or so, and uh, it's sort of been, come to be seen as a rock, uh, almost immovable. Uh, but then, it's not alone in Anambra. There are other people, such as your very good self. There is APC in there. And um, you don't think uh, uh, that, um, how does one put it now? Uh, you, you, don't, you don't see Abga as an immovable rock in that place. Not at all. I don't see Abga as an immovable rock in Anambra State uh, because the likes of us, including myself, made Abga what it is in Anambra State. Don't forget the fact that... Uh, in 2019, when I was elected a member of House of Representatives, I went to the Ninth Assembly under ABGA. Uh, we built ABGA in Anambra State uh, when those days when I left uh, ACN, Action Congress of Nigeria, and joined uh, ABGA. We built ABGA in Anambra State, and uh, I was elected under ABGA platform in 2019 to the House of Representatives. And I can tell you today that uh, the word immovable rock is not the way it is today in Anambra State because the soul of the party in Anambra State is not in existence any longer. When the likes of myself and the other progressives in the party left, uh, it means that the, the immovable rock have finally moved. And those people that uh, came together to build the party in Anambra State have all left. And majority of them are coming into APC. And some of them are already in APC. And some have moved to Labour Party. 
a lot of them from this moment will start joining APC. By tomorrow, we are going to receive some of them uh, at the national headquarters of our great party in uh, Abuja here with the national chairman leading uh, other members of the NEC to receive them into APC. So okay. I can assure you that uh, 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 that impression people have about ABGA is no more there. I can assure you that. Okay, uh, but, but beyond me, assuring me, I guess the more important person in this will be the uh, citizen of Anambra State, uh, India Anambra, as they say. Those are the people that are going to make it happen or not happen. And um, from what you've just said, it does seem that um, you are sure that you have a plausible case um, to be put before the citizens of Anambra. I mean, in all of this time, I'm just asking, so I just need to, uh, I need your enlightenment to know. Um, in order to, 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 to move an incumbent, you're going to have to make a certain appeal uh, to the citizenry. And that appeal is going to be based on uh, what you can do. Uh, that is, in this case, APC is your party now, your new party. You're going to have to be persuading the people of Anambra uh, about what you can do better than the incumbent is doing it. So what are those things that you're probably going to have to say uh, to those people who say, what's wrong with the situation that we have right now? Uh, first and foremost, as, as a member of APC in Anambra State and as a major stakeholder of the party, uh, we have outlined a lot of uh, programs and activities that will, uh, that will take the party back uh, to the heart of the people. Uh, one first thing we are doing at the moment is to ensure that uh, APC is institutionalized in the 326 wards in Anambra State, and also that we'll have a base in the 5,000 720 pulling units in Anambra State. Don't forget the fact that uh, uh, people have their perception about APC. And if you have an, ask an average Anambra person, uh, they will say that APC is not on ground in Anambra State. But let me say to you today that APC is deeply on ground in Anambra State, especially uh, what transpired in the last uh, uh, election, general election on the 25th of February 2023. Uh, I want to use my federal consultancy as, as an example of what really transpired. Recall that uh, the last time people saw broom in Anambra State was around 2011. After 2011, in 2023, Broome appeared again in Idemili North and South. I took the party to the people. I handed over the party to the people of Idemili North and South Federal Consultants. I outlined my programs, what I have done in my stay at the Ninth Assembly and what I intend to do if elected by the people to represent under the platform of APC. And I can assure you that if you look at the results of the election of 2023, especially in Idem Mili North and South, you will see that APC is deep on ground and our APC have come to stay. Don't forget the fact that Idemili North and South is within the central senatorial zone where His Excellency Mr. Peter Obi, the presidential candidate of Labour, came from. He is from Aniocha. I am from Idemili North, the central senatorial zone. I'm running an election under APC with the kind of tsunami that took place in February. One will imagine what kind of vote 
emanated from Eden Mili North and South? The answer is that the people of Eden Mili North and South once again believed in the APC and willing and they voted for APC. Our president today, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, got to the highest vote in Eden Mili North and South in the whole of Anambra State. I gave him the highest vote in the same senatorial zone where His Excellency Mr. Pitobi came from. APC got the highest vote in Anambra State from Eden Mili North and South. Eden Mili North gave the president the highest vote in Anambra State. And one will imagine, how come? What happened? How can the people of Eden Mili North cast their vote for Mr. President, and when they know that they have their own son contesting the same presidential election. Yeah. It means that it took a lot of hard work. It took acceptability of the party in Eden Mili North and South, and also across other local government in Anambra State. But the truth of it is that APC is acceptable in Anambra State, APC is acceptable in my federal constituency. And you may wish to look at the result of that election if you go to INEC, uh, uh, IREF platform. You will see the result of that election. And that will, that will further uh, explain to you if APC, APC as a political party has the capacity, the tenacity to engage the people of Anambra State and ask them to vote for the party. Especially as we are looking forward to engaging the center. Because a lot of things are happening. And you can see that uh, our people are not part of it. And we are worried. And we are looking forward to doing everything humanly possible to get our people on board so that we begin to enjoy the dividends of uh, democracy, other uh, other regions are enjoying at the center in this country. Okay. Well, um, indeed, this is the way that um, you would say it because um, you're no longer in APGA. You used to be in APGA, but you're not there uh, anymore. Now you're in APC. And there are quite a number of other politicians from that uh, uh, area uh, that you know, have uh, moved, progressed, shall we say, in the same sort of way. Um, but I think I've been uh, looking at some uh, news reports. I think one of the things that you, not necessarily you individually, but uh, people from uh, APC are saying that dissatisfies them is that they haven't seen anything that um, uh, the governor being uh, um, and, his, and his ruling party, APGA, they haven't seen anything that he has done. And therefore, it seems almost like, um, uh, to put it you know, politically, it's almost like a walkover because um, there's so much that hasn't been done. Of course, they have given back as much as they got uh, by saying that it is only a blind man who would say that he has not seen what His Excellency the Governor uh, Soludo has been doing in Anambra State. So wh wh what really is going to be the thrust? Um, I hear what you've just finished telling me, but at the end of the day, you're going to be dealing with every individual Anambrarian. And... Does he see work done? Does he see that nothing has been done and so it makes your appeal uh, much better? What are the kind of things that are going to uh, persuade him? And by the way, of course, you can expect that APGA is probably going to, have, uh, is going to want the right of response uh, and it is already guaranteed even before they ask it. Uh, but I just said, let me put that out there. Well, uh, I would not want to... Uh equate or I will not want to uh, assess the performance of the governor of Anambra State, Professor Chukuma Soludo, at the moment. On, individual, on my own capacity as an individual, I cannot as assess the performance of the governor. I, I still need to give him time. Okay. Uh, uh, he's, just, he's just celebrated his one year in the office. By March, 17th next year. It will be two years in office. 
Uh, from that point, I can assess the, perf the performance of the governor. At the moment, uh, I am not in a position to assess a governor, uh, the governor of Anambra, based on performance. So you're not impressed uh, by those also, who I, say... I, I, can also, I can also sincerely, I can also, he is doing his best at the moment. But my own concern is how to build APC in Anambra State. Okay. How to prepare right. my party to take over uh, uh, in the next uh, governorship election. And, okay. uh, anything that we need to do, uh, we're already uh, preparing grounds for that. Fair enough. Fair enough. And that's why you're talking to us, letting us know that, um, look, um, you, you're preparing uh, for this uh, campaign, as it were. Uh, it's an important campaign where uh, your party, the APC, shall come to the fore to uh, challenge the status quo. It's been there for 17 years. And, um, you know, uh, you've just finished telling us that without, you know, uh, you know, irrespective of that, you feel that you're going to be even more ready uh, to take on the job. Uh, of course, um, the governor's office uh, has put out that APC does not exist. That's his point of view, that APC does not exist in Anambra at all. And, that, um, and if you, for your part, uh, you say that um, you, at the moment, you've even been quite a bit generous, saying that, look, come March, when he's two years old in office, you begin to look at it. But people are saying that even at this stage, can anybody say that they haven't seen the roads uh, that this administration uh, has uh, achieved? Uh, not that they are saying that that's the end of the job. Uh, so you see, well, it's like people understand that, I guess this is like for the soul of Anambra. Uh, you want to do well for Anambra. The incumbent party wants to do well for Anambra. It has always been its preserve to do so. And uh, now there's a challenge that, look, APC at the center, it's even going to come up to here. We're going to get uh, Anambra uh, under the, uh, away from the yoke and uh, uh, begin to get good things happening or better things happening, I suppose, one should say, in Anambra. And that would be when, you know, the uh, APC in Anambra shall come to the ascendancy. That seems to be the way that an outsider can look at it, right? Let me deal with the issue of uh, this statement from, uh, uh, like you said, I don't know where you got that information. Uh, if that statement is from the, the, the ruling party in Anambra State, that's ABGA saying that APC is not on ground in Anambra State. Yep, that's uh, directly, that I think. That is not true. That, that, okay. Yeah. Please continue. That is not true. That, that is not true. That is not true. Let me give you an instance. And I'm always going to use the, this, in, this election, this just immediate past election in Anambra State. And as somebody who have represented a federal consultancy, and I was a candidate in that election. And when I was running for House of Representatives with APC platform, a lot of people were saying that, I am not going anywhere with APC. I am making reference to you and ask you to go and check the results of that election in the Middle North and South Federal Consultants. I don't want to dwell in other places. Okay. I want to limit my argument with my base. Ide Middle North has to third majority of the votes in the whole of Anambra State. One word in Ide Millinot has over 68,000 registered voters, PVC collected. Ide Millinot House of Reps election. I have over 15,000 votes. 12 words. Abga has 6,800 and something votes. Abga, the state ruling party. I don't yes. want to talk about labor because there was a tsunami in that election. And major stakeholders of ABGA lost their pulling units to APC. 
Okay, could you could you just including hold the on state a bit? chairman? In, excuse me, excuse me. Including this, the present state chairman of Abga lost his pulling unit to APC. I okay. won the party in Ogidi one and two. The House of Assembly member of Abga extraction, who is from Umoji. My party has over 1,320 something votes in Umoji ward. That is where APC. A sitting House of Assembly member came from. APC. Okay. One moment. Let the, Abga, Abga has been holding on. And, uh, 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 doctor. Uh, uh, Dr. Thank you. I'll come back yes. to you. Akola has been holding on for quite a while, uh, so I'll come back to you as soon as he's through. Uh, good morning, Mr. George. Uh, sorry for keeping you waiting, and thank you for no, holding okay. on. It's okay, Uncle Yari. Good morning, and good morning to our guest. Yes. Uncle Yari, I have also been uh, following developments in Anambra State. I saw uh, Ifa Yumba, uh, Ekunise, and uh, some others crossing over to APC. If I you buy is a very popular person in the in the way, uh, he, wherever he goes, he goes with his senatorial zone. That is assured from, from, from his past. We know that they were always following him to wherever he, he takes them to. But the guest needs to bear in mind that Professor Soludo was elected as governor of Anambra State, not because of Abga. It is because of his personal records and integrity. That's why the people uh, uh, voted him. Where, where are people like uh, Chris Wingige, who used to be the APC leader in the state? He just went on the ground like that. We didn't hear about him again. Why, what are they doing to rally people like that around and see how APC can be resuscitated in that state? And I want to suggest to him that Toludo is an independent thinker. I'm not, I'm not sure he is in politics on the basis of party. He's there because he wants to add value. Why don't you convince him to follow you to your new party? He may consider it on the basis of an uh, ideal and a necessity for the present time. He might come along with you. But if you go without him or you contest against him, it might be more difficult for you in, in, in the projection you have just made. That's the way I'm seeing it. Perhaps you think over it and see how you can consider it. Thank you. All right then, Mr. George. Uh, thank you for calling in. Uh, uh, a number of uh, suggestions in there. How, how, how would you react? Uh, first of all, um, he, he, the first thing he said is that what do you, you haven't mentioned, you know, names like uh, Ingege, uh, an, an APC man in the place. Does he have a, a role in any of the, in all of this? You know, you, you started this program with uh, dwelling much on issue of Abga. Uh, I think uh, we need to depart from that and look at uh, what... Ingege is not Abga. To, uh, Ngige is not Abga. I, I, I'm trying to... No, Ngige is APC. Uh -huh. So that was what I asked her. I, I said, said, I, I said when, when you started this program, you dwell more on issues that concerns APC and Abga. Yes. Uh, I think this last caller did justice to, to this issue. Uh, we okay. should talk more about what we should do to build on the new transformed APC in Anambra State in preparation for the election of 2025. Sure. Because as a ruling party in Nigeria, we are not ready to go into uh, dragging issues with uh, the state ruling party. Uh, my concern today is what we need to do or what we are doing to project the party before the masses and to take the party back to the masses in Anambra State. That is my major concern. 
and the consign of party members in Anambra State. Okay. Singige is a leader. He was a mm -hmm. former governor in Anambra State. He was a, a senator in the Eighth Assembly. He was an immediate past the Minister of the Federal Republic. And he's still a member of APC. That is one fact that I want to lay before you this morning. Then he mentioned about those senators that came in into the party. Somebody like Senator Ifan Yoba and Senator Uche Kunife. These are part of the things we are doing. Bringing major critical stakeholders in the party, both those that are in government and those that are not in government. Both those are in the grassroots area. These are part of the things we are doing. Ifa Nyoba is a serving senator representing Anambra South Senatorial Zone. He won the first seat under YPP. The second, he's in the Senate. He won his second tenure under YPP. And now he's in APC. He won one House of Rep seat under YPP. He won three House of Assembly seats under YPP. All of them are moving into APC. Ifan Yoba is a very strong political heavyweight in Idem, in uh, Newi, not Newi South, Ekusigo, Orumba North, Orumba South, Aguata. You can imagine if Anyoba coming into APC with his structure in the seven local government, with a member of the House of Representatives and three House of Assembly members, and Uche Kunife that came from the central senatorial zone where I came from. Having been in the House of Reps in the seventh and in the eighth assembly, and being a senator of the Federal Republic, coming from Anambra Central Senatorial Zone, with all his structures in the seven local government, and my own self being a, a grassroots politician in Idemili North and South, bringing my knowledge, my experience, and my exposure politically on board APC, and rebranding APC in Anambra State. And somebody will say to you that APC is not on ground, and we are not preparing for the 2025 general election. Okay. What we are concerned today... One second, I've got to take a break now. We are going... I beg your pardon, Dr. Ibezi. I I'm, thank you very much. Uh, I've got to take a break now so we can come back and um, I won't need to interrupt you. Please stay with us. We'll be right back to continue with this conversation. Okay, welcome back, and um, you know, thank you very much for uh, staying with us. Our guest, you know, is um, is, is you know, our guest is Dr. Ifeanyi Chuku uh, Ibezi. Uh, he's of APC in Anambra, and um, it is his 
and his party men's um, you know, aspiration that at the next governorship election, APC shall prevail, irrespective of the long-standing uh, monopolies, political monopoly, shall we say, um, of um, you know, the ruling APGA in the state. Okay, and he has spent on, you know, all of the time he has had on this program uh, to sort of explain how, to put it in his words, to paraphrase his words, how APC is being rebranded uh, to indeed uh, deliver the goods when the time comes. I did mention the fact that we have also heard from within uh, APCA that as far as they are concerned, APC doesn't exist, a position that uh, it doesn't exist in Anambra, a position that uh, Dr. Ibezi, you know, uh, you know, vigorously uh, denies. Okay, now the caller that, that made it into the program, you know, he had said that along your lines of thinking, um, was it not going to, would it not have some sort of, um, you know, value, for instance, uh, the way he put it, uh, to get His Excellency the Governor, uh, who he sees as a free thinker more than anything else, um, to, to align with you, in addition to notable APC names uh, such as you have been mentioning yourself. And in particular, he wanted to know how um, uh, uh, Dr. Ingige uh, also factors into all of this because these are strengths as seen from the outside. There will be many, many more within Anambra State itself that might not be known to the public before the full-blown campaign season. But that question about, um, can one take it for granted that uh, 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 Dr. Ingige is also very much on board in this, um, you know, this particular program to rebrand APC. Well, let me first and foremost uh, touch on the first uh, issue you mentioned, uh, issue of uh, uh, trying to uh, talk to the governor to join APC. APC is a larger, is the largest party in Africa. We are open to receiving. Uh, any progressive-minded person or individual that wishes to join APC. We are waiting. It's, 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 it's left for the governor of Anambra State to, if he deem it wise, that uh, he wants to join APC. We are open. He's free to do that. But notwithstanding, we are not... We are not... Uh, we are not waiting for anybody or begging anybody to join APC. We are more consigned in uh, transforming APC to be the party uh, all of us progressive-minded individuals. What, what we are looking forward to seeing APC becoming in the nearest future. Uh, you have thought about the issue of Dr. Chris Ngige. Uh, His Excellency Dr. Chris Ngige. Dr. Chris Ngige is a leader in Anambra State, and I have mentioned it to you. He is a former governor, a senator of the Federal Republic in the Eighth Assembly, and an immediate past minister of the Federal Republic. And he's still a member of APC. He can, he's a founding member of APC from the days of Advanced Congress of Democrats, ACD, that was when I started with him. Also, Action Congress of Nigeria, Action Congress, AC, and to Action Congress of Nigeria. So he has not shifted grounds. He has been with the party and is still with the party. So I don't think there is any need to say uh, if Dr. Chris Ngige is on board the the, the, uh, the, the new transformed APC we are working towards. Everybody. We can take it for granted. Every stakeholder of the party. Every, we are not taking anybody for granted. Oh, we are not I taking see. anybody for granted. Every major stakeholder in the party is on board. We just finished our meeting on Saturday where committees were inaugurated. I am heading an important, very important committee. The committee is strategic and uh, 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 a high power strategic stroke reconciliation and membership drive committee. We have started work. Today we are meeting some major stakeholders today 
and we are going to continue working till towards the election. These are part of measures we have put in place. There are other fat funding committees that have put in place by the party. So many committees are working. We are rebranding the party. We are establishing structures in the, 200, in the 326 wards in Anambra State. These are the things we are doing. And every stakeholder in Anambra State is on board. Okay. Um, every stakeholder in Anambra is on board. Uh, uh, and as you said, you would much rather that we talk about efforts of, uh, of the AB, APC to sort of, um, you know, reinvigorate itself and rebrand itself uh, in, in, um, in Anambra with the ultimate objective of uh, taking office via the electorate in uh, 2025. Um, now, how... And beyond. And, and beyond. But at least that will be the first step. Yes. I mean, that's where you want to make the Absolutely. first impact. That, you know, the status quo, you are coming to disrupt it. All other things being equal. Uh, simply because of, uh, yes. you know, as you said, uh, once APC is uh, properly... So let me ask about the progress. You, you've just given us an idea, you know, of work that is going on, research work, you know, committee work, and all of that. Um, is it possible at this stage... Uh, to have something of a, a program of events, how you see this? Because, um, look, in another, we're, we're, we're really in 2024, almost. And um, 2025, after that, is not all that far away. So it would look as if you don't have all the time. But then you did say you've been at this for quite a bit. You believe that you have enough time to make the impact that you need to make come 2025? Yes, we, we have enough time. For we, for we in the party, we don't have time based on the programs we have outlined. From this December, we are engaging the critical stakeholders of Anambra State, informing them the need to come together and f negotiate with a platform that have a national base. Igbos cannot continue to remain in a microscopic political party that has only 21 local government coverage. We should be in the mainstream politics of this country. And I want to tell you that this is the time Igbos should sit back, especially we in Anambra State. And think about our heritage, where we are coming from. Re-identify our political base and redefine our political future in a platform that will accommodate our interest. Let me bring another, another caller who is waiting. The, 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 uh, I beg your pardon. Mazi Okoroafo has come on the line. Um, wants to add to the program. Yes. Good morning, Mazi Okorafo. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, our guests. Well, we thank God we are now in the month of uh, December. Now, what I want is not only an Ambra State Governor, they should try as much as possible and make sure we know that Christmas enters on the Monday. The 25th of December is on Monday. And that one day, I thought to be a climax of uh, this uh, nonsensical nonsense uh, sit at home. The government should make sure that that sit at home will not work. Because the defeat is where all the whole world is celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. It will be irony. It will be very, very disastrous for that sit at home to work on that very day. So, our guests in the studio, please, see what you what you do. I tell the governor that anybody that whether whether governor or any politician, whether no matter it's a prosecuting level for them, that they should cancel that thing so that on the twenty fifth that nonsense will not come up. Now, when we talk about coming down, not coming down, the security is job of everybody. The Aguata issue of Colombia and Ophelia, all this unknown government, when you put the paper, you hear about it and government that I'm I'm still saying it, I'm still repeating it. Let the government make use of the vigilantes. They know the terrain. They know everything. And what is annoying 
very good idea. The traditional rulers are not helping matters in the eastern Nigeria. When something happens about stealing, you go and meet the at the end of the day, you say, hey, if you go to the police, hey, if you come to them, they say, people are hungry. People are hungry. Others are going out to struggle and manage and hustle for life. And somebody will sit down at home, be going to raise somebody's house, putting his uh, small pipe, putting his small wire, and then the traditional owner will be contributing there that the people are hungry. Please, the governors down east should talk to the traditional owner. They are also part and parcel of all this, I don't know, of this boy's city. You are still noticing where that you leave the town, travel. By the time you come back, you see what is that, what is that. Now, why the, if you didn't get peace in your own village, in your own community, where are you going to get peace? Where are you going to relax? You can't relax outside, but when you come to that, you start to watch them. So there is need for government. Empower the youth, empower the youth. I thank God the governor is trying. Education is moving. Entrepreneurship is moving. But this issue, petit petit, not to go to petit, this silly, 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 is getting out of proportion at this time. Good morning. Happy day. Thank God that we are now in the EAP of the Catholic doctrine. Good morning. Good morning, I guess. Thank you very much, uh, Mazi Okoruapo. Um, so, uh, Dr. Ibezi, how would you react to that? Well, I, I, am, I, am, I am trying to uh, take you down the line what we are doing as a political party. Uh, issue of security in Anambra State and beyond Anambra State and also in the entire Southeast is everybody's issue. Um, I know that the governors are working very hard in that regard, especially the governor of Imo State, uh, Governor Hope Uzodema, who has done so much in the area of security. And, uh, and also the governor of Enugu State, the governor of Anambra State, the governor of Abia State, and all of them. I think uh, it's not something we have to achieve in one day. And there are also some element of uh, political solution to the issue of insecurity in the Southeast. And until when our people are on board to begin to look at all these things and to begin to discuss them at the center, I think uh, uh, we'll get there sooner or later. But let me also uh, continue to discuss on what we intend to do as a political party uh, within this Christmas period and also the first week of January, second, first quarter of January, uh, second quarter, third quarter, and what may happen at the fourth quarter of uh, 2024. And I, I informed you that we have already itemized uh, action, a uh, program of action that we need to carry out <laughs> in this December, meeting the critical stakeholders in Anambra State. I am not going to rest in this Christmas period. Uh, I have my team of members, a prominent Anambrarians in the party that will move around the whole state to talk to major stakeholders and uh, important people in our various communities about the need to join the party at the center because we are losing a lot, a lot. And the only way to achieve that is for us to come into APC and begin to discuss uh, some issues that affect our people. Uh, by the time we finish that, I can assure you in the next six months, APC you are talking about, or APC people are talking about, will not be the same APC uh, uh, you are, people are having impression about. We are going to create presence in the 326 wards of the states and also presence in the 5,720 police units in Anambra states. And for we as a party, we are not going to adopt this regular uh, party structure uh, that is known. We are, we are departing from the, this ward structure uh, that is generally known. We are going down to uh, units and cluster structures. And these are one of the uh, digital ways we need to uh, take this party back to the people in Anambra State. I have done that in Idemili North and South, and it works. We are going to replicate that in all the 326 wars in Anambra State. We are going to register our strong presence in all this area. We are going to register our presence 
in the 21 local governments in Anambra State. By the time we follow up our programs through the 2024, by the end of 2024, we are going to have what we call a unity rally. Unity rally in Anambra State. That will showcase, and by that time, you will agree with me that APCD ruling party in Nigeria is in Anambra State, and we have come to Anambra State to stay in Anambra State, to win election in Anambra State, and also to take Anambra State. By that time, it will be clear to everybody that APC have come to stay in Anambra State. I, I don't know. Um, would you like to comment a bit more? Because um, uh, when Mazi Okorafo called in and was speaking on the question of uh, uh, security uh, in the uh, region, which is not a problem exclusive to the region. He, he, he said, uh, he said um, the traditional rulers have not necessarily uh, been a great uh, aid in, in this regard. Uh, what would, how do you think APC, you know, as a party, uh, might be able to you know, garner uh, more support if indeed, first of all, you agree with him um, that the traditional rulers uh, actually could uh, do a lot more in this regard. There are a lot of issues behind this insecurity in the southeast, and you should agree with me. There are some political solution to the issue of insecurity in the southeast. The traditional rulers are working very hard. The governors are doing fantastically well. An issue of insecurity or issue of security is not what we can openly discuss because some drastic measures have been put in place by our uh, law enforcement agencies and the governors are in line with that. And I don't want as an individual to discuss about insecurity in the Southeast because the governors and the law enforcement agencies are on top of it. But and I can assure you that this issue of sit at home every Monday needs some element of political solution to resolve. All and right, everybody then. in this country knows that, that once <laughs> that is done, this issue of sit at home and other things that are involved will be resolved. Okay, that's a fine place, I think, at which to leave it. Uh, Dr. Ofea Nchuku uh, Ibezi, um, you know, uh, APC chieftain, and, you know, in particular, uh, in particular, you know, you really, you know, you, 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 you say that people can look out to the fact, uh, for, uh, to the fact that the APC is going to through a renaissance in uh, Anambra, and that you are very, very optimistic uh, that, you know, there shall be great things in Anambra once you get the, um, what, what, what is it now? Once you get the traction uh, that you need, which you are working on from now, and you've just given us an outline. So I'd like to thank you for coming on. Um, as you said, you are, you know, a man of quite of political experience, former deputy chair, House Committee on Tertiary Education and Services in the House of Assembly in your time uh, there. You House of chair. Representatives. Yes. Yes, House of Representatives is what I said. Maybe I didn't say that. And you're also chairman of the High Powered Strategy uh, Reconciliation and Membership uh, Committee Drive in APC Anambra. Thank you very much for making the time for us this morning. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you for having me this morning. Thank you. Indeed. And um, well, that's...